Hello, hello, and welcome back for more Alien Chicanery and Ledger Domain as Perfidious Pete plays XCOM The Long War. And though it shames me to admit it, folks, the aliens definitely got the better of old Project Lazarus slash Mission, pulling off a sweet double bluff non-ambush ambush that goaded me into deploying a squad of ultimate badasses equipped with state-of-the-badass art weaponry for what ultimately turned out to be a training mission. As sent at all, independently targeting particle beam phalanxes, tactical smart missiles, phase plasma pulse rifles, RPGs, sonic electronic ball breakers, nukes, knives, sharp sticks, I was fully committed. I was. But then the team showed up wearing their top hat, tucks, and tails ready to pick up a date for a full-on formal black tie engagement, and the aliens pulled the red carpet right out from under our troopers by answering the door in a pair of cutoffs and a t-shirt. And it made for a pretty uncomfortable few minutes, let me tell you. Do you have any idea how weird it is to walk into a Blockbuster video to print a copy of Gone Girl while wearing a top hat, tux, and tails? Also, do you have any idea how weird it was to try and find a Blockbuster video in the first place? I mean, when's the last time you can even remember seeing one? Yeah, it's been a while because they don't exist anymore. It was damned hard, that's how hard it was. But still, the initial moments of awkwardness aside, the rest of the evening went surprisingly well. I mean, sure, the team was stuck sitting on the couch next to the shedding dog in their formal attire, and Gone Girl sucked harder than a Dyson Synetic vacuum, but at the end of the night, everyone made it back safe and there wasn't a live alien in sight. I'm also pretty sure that Virginia Big Bad Wolf got to third base with a muton, so, you know, good for her. Anyway... We need to get to scan, see if we can find another mission, and hopefully commit an appropriate level of resources to this particular activity, so let's get to it. Laser cannons. Complete. I'm pleased. Well pleased. More pleased than to just carry on, we actually need to assign these bad boys to some aircraft. Toot, toot, sweet. Listen, see who's on it here. Alright. You know, Dead Stick Weiss is one of our highest kill pilots, and he still does not have a laser. He has, what, like four kills, I think? He has four, and he still doesn't have a laser cannon. This pulls him out of action for seven days, but at this point, being armed with avalanche missiles really isn't doing anybody any favors, and we do currently have two laser cannon-equipped craft over Africa. With some of the upgrades we've got coming off the line pretty recently, I think we should be okay. Blinker is back in five days. He has two kills. I think he's a good candidate for our other laser cannon, so let's slap that on board. Let's get him sorted. Oh, uh, yeah, do we have a guy who's unnamed? Yeah, we should probably... Yeah, let's go ahead and fix that. Flight Officer Tripper Gonzalez. Give it to the Tripper! Woo! Yeah! It's actually a Tipper Gore joke. Give it to the Tipper. Tipper, of course, picking up the name Tipper Gore because she liked to give that last wet twist when rolling the J. You know, right at the end, how you seal it off so it lights good. Yeah, that's uh, it's how she got her nickname, Tipper Gore. She uh, smoked a lot of doobage back in her college days, back in the old salad days. That's probably not true. I don't know anything about that. It's just a, me making a joke. I have no uh, no particular insight into the life or history of Tipper Gore. Honestly, I don't want to know how Tipper got that name because I'm guessing it probably had something to do with more like dong and lip action. But again, that's me making unfounded allegations. Please don't, don't sue me, Tipper Gore. I honestly have no idea how you got your name. I'm just trying to crack a joke. Anyway, that's taken care of. Let's get back to scanning before the uh, lawyers of the Gore family get in touch with me and I find myself in deeply litigious territory. 20 weapon fragments for an engineer. Now, I was looking into some base building off camera just for a minute. I realized we do need 50 engineers, actually. Um, for satellite uplink, it does take 50 engineers to complete that construction project. We currently have 40, so I'm going to start picking these up. I'm willing to trade 20 weapon fragments for an engineer. That's a pretty reasonable request. We'll let the USA have those. Jane Austen, of course, back on duty. Ready to fall once again for the wrong man. Our phalanx armor is repaired, and thank God we got some new friggin' soldiers. Can we get more? Yeah, keep them coming. We're a big boy. This is an all-you-can-eat soldier buffet. We're gonna grind these guys down into friggin' hamburgers, so we need a lot of biomass to uh, get this job done. We need a glut of new troopers. A lot of people coming back on duty. Um, yeah, I'll still make the trade, Canada. Canada piling on the bandwagon there, seeing 20 credits per engineer and saying, oh, we can use 20 weapon fragments and we've got some spare engineers, so I'll take it. All right, a lot of time passing. 
you know, the fact that a bunch of time is passing and everyone's coming back on duty, sure, it's fantastic for the project, don't get me wrong. I'm glad to have troopers back, I'm glad to have aircraft back in the air, but it makes the 19 missions in 24 hours all that much saltier. I'm all the saltier for things being good now. Commander, our satellite is I can't just be happy. For this is the way things work. I'm, I'm never happy. I can't orders. be pleased. You just, you can't please me, XCOM The Long War. I'm sorry. Things are going better now, but it, it doesn't matter. I can only focus on a negative. That's just the way my brain is wired. Now, this technically was a backup satellite. The question is, do we keep it as a backup satellite or do we launch it? We could pick up the Egyptian continent bonus. Alternatively, we could expand over another continent, but we don't really have the interceptor fleet capacity at the moment to really invest in another continent. And we can't always just throw interceptors over a continent, even if we don't have satellite coverage. 25%, 30% less for workshops and laboratories. We don't even have any workshops. We do have laboratories and more buildings. So, I mean, there is some benefit to this. It also gets us an extra engineer every side. month. It takes a serious pair to go face to face with one of those things. Bradford, didn't I just make the fucking obligatory aliens ultimate badass squad joke? I think it's been done, Bradford. Don't try and pile on. You are no Bill Paxton, sir. You are no Bill Paxton. All right, let's go for Egypt. It's not fantastic in the credits department, but it's okay. We also get Architects of the Future, which has theoretically tangible benefits for us. It should reduce our monthly maintenance very, very slightly. And I think what we're going to do with some of this extra cash, let's go build a replacement new satellite. Engineers arrived this morning, Commander. We're always glad to have more help down here. Honestly, Dr. Shin, are there actually more engineers? Or are you just assuming there are more engineers because you couldn't remember how many people worked for you and you looked and the number was bigger than what you thought it should be? I mean, yes, we did send you new engineers, so you're right. But I have to assume you're right by accident in this Commander. case. Our current satellite uplink facilities yeah. are Bradford, full don't fucking question me. We don't ever question me. As soon as I know possible what's best for us, Bradford. For you can't even tell the difference between a middle of a giant city and a desolate urban area in the outback. You have no idea if it's, uh, you know, like um, the middle of the outback next to, say, Ayers Rock or London. You literally think those two, those two locations occupy the same space, Bradford. So don't question my motivations, Bradford. Seriously, don't question me. I swear to God I will fire you. At a minimum, I will fire you. At worst, I'll kill you in your sleep. Don't trifle with me, Bradford. Don't trifle with me. Penetrator weapons is real good. It's real good. And you know what's even better than penetrator weapons? Wingtip Sparrowhawks. If we could get that in before our next mission, I would be very, very pleased. Uh... That's the sound of my uncertainty, by the way. That long, sort of drawn-out, vaguely sigh-ish sound. That's that's the sound of my uncertainty. That's what it sounds like. I kind of think we have to take this. Support is not fantastic for us. I would really prefer this to be an infantry trooper, but... I'm begging for troopers. I'm begging for them. This guy starts out at a corporal. We have muton corpses to spare. We've actually done the muton autopsy as well. Yeah, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. We need a new corporal. We're taking a new corporal. That's fine. Give me some wingtip sparrowhawks. Come on. All right, so. Well, that seems abruptly out of the blue, I gotta admit. All right, so the aliens are terrorizing Ahmedabad. Fortunately, we have a pretty strong crew. Basically, the top of the top. It looks like some of the people we sent out last mission for our sucker punch are back in action. All right, we can do this. All right, let's do, uh... Well, let's make some terror happen, folks. Let's get to it. All right, what do we got here? Mata Good Time Hari just went on a mission. Is not really very close to level. She is powerful, however. Captures are probably going to be a low priority. We still need to capture a number of aliens, though. We need an outsider. Fortunately, we're not likely to find an outsider in this mission, so that sort of takes it out of the question. We need an outsider. Um, we have, I think we've only got a sectoid and a muton, so we need a thin man. Um, we need a floater. Actually, no, I think we have a floater, too. We do still need a Thin Man for certain. Uh, Muton Berserker, if we could get our hands on one, would be a bit of a coup. All right. Let's gear up for killing. Now, Jane Sporty Austin, I think, is the right pick here as our support gunner because, as you can see, she's real close to a level. As long as she doesn't die, there's basically no way she fails to achieve more power. And like Tim the Toolman Taylor, we're always in a search of more power. Oh, 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 oh. Of course, we don't have the level and sensible 
level-headed Wilson next door to offer us advice on our idiotic schemes, but... You know, I, uh, I do have Jonathan Taylor Thomas good looks. Yeah, that, that's a complete double fucking fabrication and a lie. I actually look more like a garbage bag that would uh, contain Jonathan Taylor Thomas's trash. All right. If we're not going for captures, then there's really no reason to take a Mary Prometheus Shelley or a head on Dead Eye Keller. Although, on a terror mission, we could run into a unit that we wouldn't mind disabling the weapons on. Cyber discs are a possibility. Mectoids also a possibility, and God forbid we run into a sectopod. Let's take a look at the level situation. Van Dorn is almost guaranteed to bump. Mary Shelley is unlikely to bump. Helen Keller is also unlikely to bump. You know what? I think we go for Van Dorn. Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna go for Van Dorn. I would rather have the promotion, and you know, there is something to be said for Executioner. Oh, Van Dorn has Disabling Shot. Who's our deadly sniper then? Oh, that's Franklin the D Roosevelt who gives folks the D. All right then. Well, this works double both ways. Fantastic. I would never have thought I would have said this, Van Dorn, but I'm, I'm actually kind of glad to see you, buddy. Glad to see you. That big bald dome of yours looking like fucking Lex Luthor, you sexy bastard. All right, so let's get a gunner and a sniper. Um, engineer, yes, please. I... Oh, you know what we need to do? Seeing Napoleon there reminds me. Let's go. We'll be back for you in a moment, Terra Mission. But, uh... A bunch of time has passed, and we have not scanned for Exalt, and... It's still not down to 50 credits, it's at 75. I would scan it at 75, but at the time stands, we don't actually have 75 credits, so I kind of can't. All right, then. Well, we shouldn't be in any immediate danger. I mean, it's been a while since we've scanned for Cobert Ops, but if it's not at 50 yet, we shouldn't really be in any terrifyingly huge danger. Still, it's a concern. We need to keep an eye on it. Do we take the knife man? He's unlikely to level. Do we have an engineer that's maybe borderline? The madman just leveled. Marie, uh, you know, Marie Radium Curie. There's a case to be made here for taking Curie, and I'm going to do it. We're going to take the little Radium gal. We want to get her mayhem if we can. I wouldn't mind having suppression. Oh, she actually has suppression. You said, you know what? Yeah, Marie Radium Curie will do. She's not the ideal choice, but she's good enough, damn it. She's smart enough, doggone it, and people like her. They really do. She's a lovely woman. All right, we need a scout. I'm leaning towards battle scanners, but it's been a while since we've taken Thomas Avarice Edison on a mission, I gotta say. Is he close to a level? Uh, he's almost guaranteed to bump. Alright, we gotta take Thomas Edison. I know, he's a scumbag, and I don't like him, and he doesn't like me, and nobody likes anybody. One battle scanner for Edison. You know, if we're only gonna take one battle scanner, we might be better off to just take a friggin' arc thrower and see if we can capture a thin man or something. Then again, there are civilian lives that... You know what? No. Let's take the battle scanner. Let's not... Let's not buck convention. What else have we got here? All right. So we could use assault troopers definitively. A medic is pretty much a must. I think Joseph the Cleaner... Eh, do we have a medic that's near a bump? Medics? Uh, do we have somebody... Ooh. You know, Sir Ernie Shack and Elvis are... They've both got a little ways to go, but it would not be out of the question for either of them to level. Elvis is a little closer. Ernie Shackleton is a little... I was going to say, you know what? I was going to say a little better, but I'm not necessarily sure that's true. Yeah, let's take Elvis. I'm comfortable with Elvis. It's a sequin jumpsuit. I mean, it's so relaxing. You see a man in a giant sequin jumpsuit like that, and you think to yourself, you know, that thing looks really, really comfortable. And there's a man that eats a lot of peanut butter and banana sandwiches because his waistline is expanding faster than the universe. Ah, it's like inflation theory, really. Feel free to Google that. That's I feel bad about making physics jokes, but uh, it's all I got, folks. It's all I got. Do we want to take an infantry trooper? Where is Edgar Allan Poe, by the way? Uh, we haven't seen old Edgar in a long time. He is gravely wounded and will be back in one day. All right, well, we can take Edgar on our next mission. Do we want an infantry trooper, then, I think is the question. Engineer, scout, medic, sniper, gunner. We have three slots left. I wouldn't mind seeing two of those slots go to assault troopers because we're fucking swarming with assaults. That's not a bad thing, by the way. I do love me some assault trooper. Don't get me wrong. Don't think I'm, I'm bagging on the assaults. I really do like them. Why am I even considering it? He would level... Why am I considering it? I hate Rocketeers so much. 
no, Norman Borlaug, no, fuck Norman Borlaug. If I'm gonna, oh god, I hate myself so much for doing this. I really hate myself right now. Did we take a Rocketeer on our last Terra mission and they did absolutely nothing for the team, as I recall? Or did we even, you know what, I don't think they took, uh. All right, this, this is, I want to say this is a questionable call, but that's, that's me fucking fooling myself. This is not a questionable call. This is a bad call. This is a bad call. I should not be doing this, and I'm still going to friggin' do it. Uh, sometimes the things I do, I wonder about my own sanity. And what about Teddy and the bench? Can we do a little Teddy and the bench action here? Oh, holy crap. Joan of Arc is back in duty. Abraham Hardcore Lincoln, Joan of Arc. We're a little spoiled for choice here. William Shakespeare. I don't see that we could make Teddy and the bench happen. Eleanor Wolverine Roosevelt. Neither Willie Shakes nor Eleanor are particularly close to leveling. Abraham Hardcore Lincoln is almost certain to level. Joan of Arc has a... You know what? Let's go with Joan of Arc and Abraham Lincoln on this one. Joan has... Oh, St. Joan, I hate to say goodbye to your battle scanner, my dear, but I have to do it. I am compelled by the build to get rid of that, so we'll give you a motion tracker instead. St. Joan is real greasy fast. And then I think Abraham Lincoln. This way we have one close encounters unit, and then we also have one hit and run unit. I'm fairly comfortable with that. So give me the hardcore, the vampire hunter himself, ostensibly, Abraham, or the rail splitter Lincoln. All right, um, we're out of motions. We could put a motion detector on Lincoln and go for extra med kits for our medic. It's not a terrible idea. Alternatively, we could take the arc thrower, and if a cherry opportunity falls into Abraham Lincoln's lap, we'll take it. If it doesn't fall into Abraham Lincoln's lap, well, we just gave up one speed. I hope we won't need this many med kits anyway. Which is basically me guaranteeing verbally that I'm going to need one more med kit than I have on the mission. I've pretty much just sealed someone's fate right there. Strike one. Prepare for All landing. Right. Let's do this. Now, panic is low in India, so we don't necessarily have to India. do an amazing job on this one. Of reports indicating the aliens are engaging civilian targets in an urban area. Yeah, they're We've always been doing that. Asked to intervene as soon as possible. On the plus side, congratulations for identifying an urban area as an urban area. Full marks there. I see your uh, geography skills are improving slightly. Or did you just throw the dart at the dartboard and go, "Is it a?" Then you hear a swift sound of the dart flying through the air, followed by a soft thunk, and Bradford says, Urban area. Because I gotta assume that's how that went down, actually. Strike team is in position near the terror right. site. Awaiting confirmation. So where are we at? Solid and do we have any sky. civilians? And if Strike so, where are they? The green light. Now, I gotta say, one thing I do kinda civilians. like about the motion detector, this is a terrible spot to start with Van Dorn, by the way. He's gonna have no shots of anything. He's not gonna give a shit. One thing I do like about the motion detector, though, admittedly, it shows us where civilians are. Also meld canisters and things of that nature, but there is not a single civilian even within motion tracker range. That, frankly, is terrible for us. So this is a real bad spawn. We are not going to do well on this particular mission. All right, so let's send the king forward. Should we move towards the higher concentration of civilians in this open area of titanically devastating potential gunfire? Or do we move out here where we have largely no cover at all? It's basically a choice between a bowl of shit and a shit sandwich because each option sucks more D than, uh... Ah, uh, uh, yeah, it's sucking more dick than the entire porn industry, really. This is not good. All right, can I see inside? Is this full cover? All right, Van Dorn. I don't like this move for you, buddy, but we got to get you on the rooftop as quick as possible. On the plus side, we have established that that area is clear. Let's get Jane Sporty Austin up to provide a little supporting fire. We can keep an eye on this civilian, at least this way. So I think we do a combination move. Let's uh, sort of pincher attack our way into this building. Also, some fantastic driving by this rig, big rig here. Got kind of a maximum overdrive situation happening there. The machines have come to life, and they are hyper-intelligent and ready to kill. Um, Jay Robert, if anybody's going to do anything dangerous and stupid, you are that man. Position. Dangerous and stupid is uh, Jay Robert Oppenheimer's business, and business is good for Jay Robert Oppenheimer. So Thomas Avers Edison is real fast. Uh, theoretically, there's a case to be made for throwing a battle scanner here, but instead we're going to advance into this giant hole left by our... Some, uh, we can't actually go through there, so that was a complete waste. 
the hole is not big enough for Thomas Avarus Edison. A common problem for Edison because he's hung like a. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Funny. I feel my teeth. Don't laugh at that. If you laughed at that, shame on you. Be ashamed of yourself. That was not funny. You should not have laughed at that. Also, I have no idea how well endowed Thomas Avarus Edison is. Given his proclivity for fucking his business partners, though, I would assume that he was at least reasonably well endowed. Alright, well, this is not bad for us, actually. That is admittedly less good. So, a pot of floaters and a pot of seekers simultaneity. It's not good for us, but honestly, this could have been dramatically worse. We're in an okay position vis a vis the floaters, and. As strange as this may sound, Norman. J. Robert Oppenheimer actually could kill this entire pod, theoretically. Now, we do also have an additional full pod killer in that Meridium. Uh, mer meridium? It's a combination of Marie and Radium. But Marie Radium Curie here with one grenade. Assuming we could bounce it off something like this wall. Well, we can't do it from this angle. Right, that's a little unfortunate. Let's see what Oppenheimer can do if we just. How likely is J. Robert Oppenheimer to kill himself with this rocket? That's the operative question, and the answer is 100%. Alright, stop, stop, scat. Alright, alright, we gotta get out of this. Stop doing the flipping around thing. You know, one thing I will say, if they only change one thing between the tactical maps of XCOM 1 and 2, and I seriously hope they change more than one thing, but if they only change one thing, and only one thing, I would like for it to be this flickery flicker bullshit with the rockets. Just have them be kind of static for me, please. Because I really want it to hit here, but if it flickers back and fires short like that, we're probably boned. All right, come on. Do this. All right. Suck on I think this. we... That's the greatest rocket J. Robert Oppenheimer has fired in the course of his XCOM career. That is the single greatest rocket he has ever fired. All right, so Jane Sporty Austin is going to take whatever her best shot is because this is all she's got. She's got these two shots. Double 46 is at the more distant target is respectable, if not good. Elvis is not going to really have much to offer here. Van Dorn has a can't miss shot. That's... We got to take this. We can't not take that shot. It's 100%. Could pull a kill. All right, so Van Dorn is erasing one third of our probables. Down they go, down the drain, Roto Rooter style. Do we want to double take the 46s with Jane Austen, or would we rather have maybe Thomas Avaris Edison slip forward and see if he can't get a little hollow targeting shot? You know, I think that might be the wrong play. One hit is going to kill that guy. If we get the double 46s, I think it's the stronger move. Let's just take the low ball chance with the distant target. And then we can have Thomas Edison. All right, fantastic. So our gambit has already immediately paid dividends, which means we can take Thomas Avers Edison. We bring him up here. He can take a nice little hollow targeting shot at this. If there's anybody on Overwatch, he has the potential to trigger them as well. This shot is bad. What about a flush shot? Uh, better, but also bad. It's actually not going to force that floater out of his cover either. It also takes more ammo. Uh, let's just take the hollow targeting shot. This is not going to hit. Don't kill the civilian, Tom Thomas Anderson, buddy. Look at that. You got to check your lane of fire, bro. You got to check your lane of fire. That is not friggin' cool, man. That is not cool. You got to watch your backdrop, man. Watch the backfield. You got to keep an eye out on that shit. Oh, and so now it. we're in a slight pickle. So we got Abraham Hardcore Lincoln. Do we have anybody else? Uh, St. Joan could potentially also offer some backup. We could definitely get up there with a run and gun. We definitely could. St. Joan is more durable. If we're going to have to do the run and gun maneuver, I think St. Joan is the right call. So we're going to take St. Joan in, and I'm actually going to risk the close, core, close encounter shot here to get the civilian rescue. Also, we're doing some unknown territory. This is doubly risky. Probably a terrible idea. All right, so no close en... Uh, okay, so we got the civilian. This guy does not have close encounters. He's also fucking dead. So rack another kill for old St. Joan and Abraham Hardcore Lincoln. Where do we want to put you? There should be some more civilians either inside or on top of this building. We don't really need to run and gun or anything too terrifyingly insane with Abraham Hardcore Lincoln. I really hate this area over here. I don't really want to engage the enemy in that neighborhood. Let's come over in the front of this building instead. I mean, we got some frontage. Let's uh, let's let Abraham Lincoln take an opportunity and use said frontage to the... You're going to go all the way around through there, huh? 
That's uh, pretty poor pathing, buddy. Pretty poor pathing there, the king. I mean, I know you have a propensity for leaving the building and whatnot. It was kind of your bit. But before you leave the building, you need to go in it. And I would prefer you not run in it in the way that's most likely to spawn 8,500 pods of what could potentially be chrysalids that then charge us on our next turn. That'd be real bad, Elvis. Real bad. Right, so we've saved one civilian and lost two. It's not fantastic, but it is what it is. We're, we're making progress. On the move. Van Dorn, get to the rooftop. We need you up there sniping. Some scouting actually would be also quite useful. Additionally, it's going to give us an opportunity to maybe pull a couple cheap civilian rooftop saves. Understood. I don't really think we should advance much on this turn. We're not in a necessarily fantastic position. position. Let's take a little peek in here. Um, we see nothing. All right, let's do another little dash of some corner cover. J. Robert has spawned a pod, but it's Seekers, which actually is not that bad for us. Three Seekers is a little dangerous, but it is not terrifyingly dangerous, especially when we have St. Joan and Honest Abe here ready to deal with the problem. Honest Abe could do some serious damage to these guys. It leaves him in a little bit of an unfortunate situation cover-wise. I think this merits another motion tracker. Okay, so we have another pod that is over in this area. So civilian, civilian. All right, they are a goodly, well, not a goodly, but at least a reasonable distance from us. We can make this work. So let's bring Lincoln in. This Enemy should not spawn any additional enemies. Enemy or we could be completely and totally screwed. Now, on the plus side, they got to go around because they can't kick open that door. But this is not good for us. Who would I rather have firing here? Thomas Avarice Edison does not have in the zone, but he does have low profile. That chrysalid should not be I'm able rolling. to make it to our position. Should be okay. All right, so Edison, what do you got here? 87s. Bunch of 87s. All right. We can potentially make that work. Abraham Lincoln, what do you got? Two of them are... Uh, you can pretty much kill that guy, guaranteed. How many tiles away is that chrysalid? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... He is not going to be able to make it. There is a civilian over there, which is troubling. There's a whole pile of civilians over there, which is also troubling. All right. Kill this man, Lincoln. He's got to die. And so one kill for Lincoln and a hit and run. Can we go two for two? All right, we're going to go for the plush banana. Abraham Lincoln hitting and running like a friggin' champ right there. Two shots, two kills for the Lincolnator. I will take it. Thomas Avarice Edison, what can you bring to the table here? Really, all I need is a hit. This guy will die if you can connect. All right, so Thomas Avarice Edison, bam, and the promotion for the A-man. I am well pleased by that. Well pleased indeed. So we're going to bring St. Joan up here. We're going to put her on Overwatch as an emergency little butt plug stoppage. Just in case any anal leakage occurs and we need uh, somebody to maybe get a shot in there to help protect. Rolling out. Honest Abe. I mean, we don't want another Forge Theater incident. That would be bad. I think everyone can agree. I mean, the first time sucked hard enough. Is Elvis going to have a shot from here? He does. 66% is okay. I think we should take this. There's a case to be made for putting Elvis on Overwatch there, but I'd actually rather have the damage now. It's no guarantee it's going to be as good as 66% on his next attempt, so we might as well take it while we get it. Also, Overwatch would have wound up getting... It would have, would have fired at this guy, who clearly has lightning reflexes because he's an elite. That's a civilian dying? Yeah. Yep, okay. So that's a dead civilian and a zombie. Uh, note to you other civilians, please vacate the area immediately, if not sooner. Oh, you chrysalid scumbag pieces of shit. That's a dick move, chrysalids. That's a dick move right there. You have more targets in the vicinity, and what do you do? Concentrate on the civilians. You guys are fucking pure, hold core, undiluted scum. All right, are they going to be able to get to us? The answer is almost certainly yes. Jane Sporty Austin is not going to be able to do a damn thing. Hardcore can probably kill that guy. He has no cover. He is wide in the open. We don't really need to get that close to him. Hardcore has exactly Ready two shots now. left in the gun as well. Let's do this. 96%. I am comfortable with this rate. Honestly, having him shoot again might be overkill. Um, but then again, his other shots are pretty terrible. 
Alternatively, the right solution might be to have him reload. We can bring Edison over here. He should be able to kill this crystal, it almost guaranteed. The strike rifle is not fantastic at close ranges. It does have a slight penalty to hitting up close targets. Let's take this kill. This is gonna empty the empty the clip here for Edison. Yeah, that's it. So Thomas Everest Edison taking care of business. Not necessarily working over time. We don't necessarily know how he feels specifically about Bachman Turner Overdrive, but uh I have to assume he's a fan. I mean, what's not to love? Location confirmed. So we're going to send Van Dorn on a little solo mission up here on the rooftop, grabbing some civvies while it's safe. Also, that's the most athletic civilian of all time. They get leaped off the top of that building like it was nothing. That's uh, that's some remarkable alacrity from Team Civilian. Worst case scenario, St. Joan dashes up there and blows the holy living shit out of that guy. Does she have hit and run available? She does not. Okay, so she could definitely kill that dude. I mean, that's a given, and it's also a free move. I sort of like this plan. I'm worried about our civilian friend, however. That's, the civilian is actually my concern here. As odd as that may sound, I'm a little worried about him. All right, Oppenheimer, how can you not even see that guy? Well, let's face it, you're J. Robert Oppenheimer. If anybody's gonna find a way to I'm fail, it, Commander. you're that guy. All right, so you get um, 80%. What can you do down? 79. Uh, it's 1% less, but we have fewer targeting options here. Of course, J. Robert Oppenheimer finding a way to fuck it up, because fucking shit up is what J. Robert Oppenheimer does, and not necessarily in the way you might like J. Robert Oppenheimer to fuck shit up. He fucks it up the bad way. That's my point. He does it He does it the bad way. Moving to position. All right, so we got to bring Elvis up here. What's your hit chance like, Elvis? You hit a 66 a minute ago. Back it up, Elvis. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, mama, that's why you're the king, Elvis. That's why you're the king. Oh, mama. All right, so Jane Sporty Austin has literally nothing to bring to this situation. Let's not task her with anything beyond her abilities. Okay. We cannot throw a grenade down there because that is going to end well for pretty much nobody involved. So let's just take the shot. Marie Curie getting the laser to the face action see done. Let's see if uh, St. Joan, well, I mean, she can't not come up and finish this piece of garbage off. So let's make him go the way of the dodo. Good day to you, Crystalwood, sir. You are done dealing. And let's have St. Joan and Abraham Hardcore Lincoln then drop some reloads for us. Jane Sporty Austin, we will advance to here and drop her into over. Well, she can't overwatch. We'll have her hunker down, I guess. And so this guy's going to reanimate as a zombie and shuffle about. That's fine. We can just kill him. There you go. He should only get a half move the turn he spawns, I believe. He should not be able to walk around and punch another civilian. Or can he? Well, he can't actually get to a civilian, so it's not really a problem. Where are you going, you piece of shit? What, what are you guys doing? I don't like your mysterious movements. What is this all about here, you devious shits? I mean, those guys got really... What? Civilian! Help is over here! Where the hell are you going? Ah, uh, civilian AI is the worst AI. Just pointing that out there, throwing that out. That's a that's a free piece of advertisement from Perfidious Pete. Be aware, civilian AI, it's the worst AI ever. All right, so Jane Sporty Austin can probably eliminate this zombie. Let's just have her do that. Sporty lighting him up for seven and following that seven up with nine. So some fantastic damage from the Sportster. We could send Elvis Aaron Presley forward, but I don't necessarily relish that idea. I wouldn't mind having Elvis there are, are there any more civilians over here in this neighborhood? I am considering tossing a grenade just to open up our sight lines a little bit, but now that I think about it, that may be a terrible idea. Let's instead have Joan of Arc go use her Close Encounters ability. I think she'll be fine. Yeah, come on and if there's something in here, she can always dash back once this zombie is dead as well. So, good night, zombie. There's no enemies in here, so there's no disadvantage into taking the can't miss shot. And St. Joan, with the elimination, she it's shot him through nice. a door. All right, now let's let's be more realistic okay. here, St. Joan. Uh, the trick shot, I mean, it was <laughs> remarkable shooting, and it would have impressed even Annie Oakley, who is on the team, and a remarkable shot as well. But now is not the time for showboating, St. Joan. I mean, I know it's been a little while since you've seen some action due to an unfortunate situation with you and some critical wounds, but yes, it's probably on. not the time for showboating, Joni. Let's 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 be a little more realistic let's here. Rock. Showboating at this point may be a little premature. You do still have J. Robert Oppenheimer fucking boat anchoring this team. I'd like to point out, J. Robert Oppenheimer 
is in the house, and okay. if anybody can fucking boat anchor this shit, J. Robert is the man. We could go for a civilian cat. Oh, uh, is that a double save? It is not. It's still real tempting, though. That leaves Thomas Everest at us in out in the open, surrounded by potential foes with no friggin' bullets. It's the no bullets thing that actually. No, I can't. I can't take that chance. Let's hope these civilians don't do something idiotic like go leap down the sectoid's mouth. All right, I'm actually quite glad we did not take that action because we've got some units that somehow got behind us. Also, we've lost six civilians, which is okay. I've got more than I'm comfortable with. All right, so we've got Seekers. I'm very glad I didn't take Thomas Avers at us now. Holy shit, that's some kind of Uber Seeker? All right, Van Dorn is not going to get a shot. How are we... Uh, Marie Curie, where are you? Marie Curie could probably eliminate most of that pod with a single grenade. And she could probably do it from... Uh, I'm worried her line of sight might be blocked. And potentially she may not have anything to... All right, here, let's do this. First off, we brought him. Let's... I want to say make best use of him, but... I, I can't even really bring myself to say it. We do have him on the mission, though. Let's see if Oppenheimer can... I don't know. It seems like terror missions and Oppenheimer aren't necessarily tragically awful. We do need to spin our view here so we can actually figure out where this rocket's going to hit. This occasionally turns out not as desperately horrible as every other situation in which we tend to use J. Robert Oppenheimer. So let's toss this one here and hope for he doesn't scatter it onto a civilian's face. Like, you know, he's going to do there. Where is the civilian? Right there. All right, well, Johnny Civvy may have to take one for the team here. Assuming this scatters into the civilian, this is going to end real badly for our civilian friend. It's going to blow up his car. All right, let's do this. Hoorah! If it scatters, it scatters. Actually, that was a really good shot, J. Robert Oppenheimer. You didn't even scatter it into the civilian. Wow. I honestly don't know what to say about that, J. Robert. Moving we are going to come out here for the capture. This may spawn an additional pod. You're safe. Now get moving. So it could be there's a zombie back there beating people up. I'm not entirely sure. How do you not have a shot, by the way, Edison? On the move. All right, well, give me another save. So we've got five saved. That's not fantastic, but it's definitely not the worst we've ever done either. We do have running guns up, so we could advance. Van Dorn really isn't going to be able to offer much. Let's hold off on him. We might need him to throw a little bit of a overwatch. The King's got a pretty good shot here. 76% is all right. We got Lincoln. We got Marie Curie on backup. Curie could just suppress if we need her to, but she's got a really good chance to hit also. What else have we got? Jane Sporty Austin is doing nothing. Right, so let's bring the Sportster over here. We're going to have her reload. It's killing time. Also, for whatever reason, she does not have a shot from there. Okay. All right, Elvis, give me the 76. You've been spot on all mission, Elvis. And Elvis continues to be spot on, if for slightly less damage than we might have preferred. It's still acceptable. Marie Radium Curie will take the 83 percenter with the follow-up. Missed but destroyed the wall, which is interesting, because that actually opens up some options for us, really. I think we bring Abraham Hardcore Lincoln out here and see if he can go for a little hit and run on our buddy. He can't even see him. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. So that just leaves us Hardcore and Joan of Arc. So Hardcore could run and gun if he has to. All right, let's do this. All right. We got you, St. Joan. You're the girl. You're going to take this man down. You're going to beat his ass. You're going to do to him what you did to the English back in the day. That's right. Give him the old uh, King Edward treatment. That's exactly what we needed. And that's it. Operation Bleeding Whisper is over. 17 aliens killed. 12 civilians saved. Which, for me, you can rate it as acceptable all you want, XCOM. I'm calling that one slightly better than acceptable. I'm pretty pleased with that. And you know what? For a change, J. Robert Oppenheimer actually did an okay job. That's the best I'm willing to give him. Okay. I mean, he's definitely no Norman Borlaug. That's the one thing we can say. Sure, he's not a genius. He's not setting the world on fire. He's definitely not developing an atomic bomb to throw at the aliens. Great work, but he's Commander. doing some serviceable work for us. If only way. Norman Borlaug could be inspired by his example and not fucking suck every dick in the room, things would be a lot better, but... Norman Borlaug, he loves the D more than Franklin Roosevelt. All right, so a promotion for Van Dorn. Fantastic, despite, uh, you know, he got a kill. Never mind, I was going to say he didn't, not, him not doing much, but he actually did get a kill. Tactical sense is real good. Bring him on is less good. 
In fact, it's actually kind of shitty. Bonus damage on critical hits based on how many enemies you're... I mean, it's interesting. Oh, uh, well, screw this. We fucked this up last time with a Mel Gibson not taking lock and load. It's going to be lock and load for Van Dorn, and there's no question about it. Tactical sense is intriguing. It's nowhere near as fucking intriguing as lock and load, though. We're taking lock and load. Thomas Savage Edison is going to get in the zone. No question there. And St. Joan. All right. Um, it's resilience. I don't really, I really don't like Killer Instinct. I do have an affinity for Executioner. I really kind of like it. It's pretty good, especially considering the fact that our troopers can often shoot twice. So they can put somebody below 50% health and then get the bonus aim and bonus critical to finish them off with the double shot. This also has additional benefits for St. Joan because she does not have hit and run. She has close encounters. Which means late game, she's gonna struggle a bit. Up close next to... You know what? I think for St. Joan, since she has close encounters, I think I'm actually going to take Executioner. I really love Resilience. It's so good. Immunity to critical hits is its huge. It's nothing short of huge. But for St. Joan, I actually think Executioner is going to be better for her in the long run. So I'm going to take Executioner here. And that's everybody sorted. So a positive mission outcome for us. Three floater corpses, some chrysalids, seven illyrium. We did blow up a whole bunch of corpses with grenades and rockets, but I don't really give a shit because it was just Seekers. Seven illyrium, 13 alloys, three weapon fragments, two meld, and we did manage to salvage four Seeker corpses despite our proliferation of grenades and other explosives. Panic has increased in India. Panic Remember, increased across Asia. I do want to take a look at that and just see how much panic specifically we're talking about. A little. More than I would like, but by no means an insurmountable amount. An unfortunate... Eh, India got it pretty good. They have almost two full pips. We're going to need to expand our operations into China, Japan, and India pretty damn quick. We need more engineers then so we can build a satellite nexus and get some birds in the air over India. But uh, that's a mission for another day. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comments section. Your support really does mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see more XCOM, consider subscribing as well. We post new episodes every single day. Right now, however, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.